Hello, this is a tutorial on how to use the program Audacity for studying foreign languages. Audacity has tons of features for editing music and sound effects. I'm not going to touch on any of those. I'm just going to touch on the things that you can use and do to do the following things. How you can use Audacity to edit the sound files that you get when you purchase a, a Teach Yourself language course, such as a Pimsleur or an Asimil course. I'm going to talk about how you can use this program when you're using the technique of shadowing to check and see if you're doing it correctly. I'm going to talk about how you can use this program to make recordings of your own voice and the recordings that are helpful to you to listen to in such a fashion that you get your brain really thinking in the language much faster than you can with other kinds of recordings. I'm going to talk about how you can use this program to salvage or rescue older media, older audio that may have been stored on tapes for decades and might be slightly corrupted because of this. And finally, I'm going to talk about how you can use this program to um, make audiobooks in foreign languages a bit easier to listen to when you first start to do so. So um, Audacity is a program that's been out there for a long time. There's a huge uh, number of forums about it, lots of information that you can get about how to use this. I think I've gathered the best information over the years about how to do the things that I'm going to show you how to do today. But uh, if somebody sees this and knows a better way to do these things, I would be very, very happy to learn from you as well. So Audacity is uh, a program that I have used extensively over the years in my pursuit of polyglottery. And I really think that if I had not had access to this program, I would still be a polyglot and still be polyliterate, but I would not have had access to many, many things that I've come to depend on. I might have a totally different take on the, uh, on the pursuit. I don't think I'd be quite as, as varied and, and well-rounded. Um, so it's a very, very important and valuable program to me. And I've used it, as I said, for, for a long time and always sort of assumed that other people did as well. Um, but then every so often learned that they don't or they're not so sure about it. And this happened recently in the language learning support group that I'm um, leading in my academy uh, with a lot of digital natives that I just assumed they would know how to do this better than, than I do, but they, they said they did not. So this is for them first and foremost, but it's also for you, anybody who finds this information valuable and interesting. <clears throat> I've mentioned at my academy, I don't wanna to talk too much about that here this evening, but I will on next Tuesday. Uh, May 14th at 1 p.m. Chicago time. I'm going to attempt for the first time to have a sort of a live streaming uh, in tandem with another YouTube educator who approached me and with whom I had a, a fascinating, very long conversation about many things, uh, interesting intellectual conversation that we're going to, um, he's going to put live on, on his site. Uh, and so I'm going to talk about that with him and hopefully uh, mention some things, updates and developments about the, the Academy then as well. So uh, if you're interested in that, please join us at that time, mark that on your calendar and perhaps we'll see you there. <clears throat> For now, uh, before I embark upon talking about the program Audacity, we have to talk about the name. It's kind of an odd name for an audio program, but I think it's not they didn't choose it because it was audacious. They just liked the way that it sounds with audio, audacity, and the like. But obviously, it does have that meaning of, of being audacious. And when you search audacity in any search engine, and I encourage you to do that now, the first thing you'll find is where and how to download this. I think you should download this before you watch this video. Have the program open. Pause my video. And above all, check the settings when I show you various settings and some of the effects that you can do. Um, you'll find. Again, putting Audacity into a search, uh, you'll find where to download it. You'll find those forums that I mentioned and other help uh, info information. But if you scroll down a little bit, eventually you'll come not to Audacity, the, the sound editor program, but Audacity in, in a dictionary, or, actually, or better yet, in a thesaurus. <clears throat> and it's quite interesting. If you look at the synonyms for Audacity and thesaurus, such as uh, temerity or effrontery or gall or chutzpah, they're all uniformly negative. These are only, there's, there's, there's no positive sense that you can use. The words audacity and audacious depends on your tone of voice, whether you say the audacity of it all. The audacity, You're, you can say it admiringly or you know, kind, of, kind of insulted. Uh, to be audacious can be a good thing because what, what does it mean fundamentally audacity? Audacity means a kind of boldness to see beyond established boundaries, a boldness to 
go beyond conventions, a goldness to, to go beyond. Um, and I think ultimately polyglottery, the whole pursuit of it is rather audacious. In most people, there's a basic assumption that um, you can't learn lots of languages. And certainly there's a basic assumption out there that you can't teach yourself lots of languages, but that's what polyglots do. We, we teach ourselves lots of languages. So it is um, inherently an audacious pursuit. Audacity is involved. So it's great that we have this program called Audacity to, to help us in that quest. So I am going to now show you a number of editing features that you can do with uh, this program. I've preloaded them to, to save time, um, but you can upload any file into Audacity just by, once you've got the program open, going to file, going to open, and then you have a list. You can find your files here and just open it and, and pull it up. So here in this first one, I have a, uh, a Pimsleur course. Anybody who doesn't know Pimsleur is a very popular all audio course for teaching yourself languages. The pedagogy is um, you're prompted to say something and then there's a long pause in which you're supposed to say it and then you hear the correct answer. Many people swear by this. Many people really like this um, program. And even if you are one of those, I encourage you to give a try what I'm about to show you because I think you might even like it better, even better. And if you're somebody who hasn't been able to use it before, doesn't like it, maybe if you do this, you'll find it does have useful material. This here is a visual representation of uh, the file for Pimsleur's Russian uh, part nine, set to B. Uh, and so this is physically what a sound file looks like. What are all these gaps? These are all the pauses. This is all the space in between. My issue with Pimsleur courses and courses like that is I think even if we accept the pedagogy of, okay, I should listen and then repeat, I should be prompted and then tease out, I should, it might be good for me to come up with their answer by myself. I don't think that the space of time they give you is often correct. I think it's either too long, in which case you say it and then you sit and you wait and your mind wanders and you get impatient while you're waiting for the, uh, the, the correct answer to come, or it's too short. You don't have time, you're cut off. In either case, I think it's kind of frustrating and I think it would be much better to say, okay, if I want to repeat, I can get the prompt, hit the pause button, take the exact amount of time that I need to say it, and then say it. So I think it would work better that way. And also, if you have um, limited the pauses beyond that, you can shadow it. You have just nonstop, um, nonstop audio. And I think that that is ultimately a much better technique. At any rate, what we want to do, the main thing here, is we want to get rid of all these pauses and see how much time we can save. So the way you do that is, first and foremost, I also am looking at this and I'm seeing there's a lot of blank space up here and up here, up here and up here. What does that mean? That means that this file is not as loud as it could be. If you have an audio file, it should be as loud as it can be so that when you listen to it, you don't need to crank up the volume as high as you want. So before we truncate the silence, I just take out the pauses, we want to make this louder not just for the reason that I gave, but also because when you truncate silence, you do need to be careful. Uh, there are certain sounds, particularly final T in languages such as Persian, nist, ast, or Latin, est, sunt, or even German, ist. That final T is usually, when you see the graphic representation of it, is kind of a separate puff of air that's a little bit smaller than the rest of the sound. And if you don't have the volume amplified, um, that is small enough that sometimes when you truncate the silence, that gets clipped out and you don't want that to happen. So the first thing we wanna do is go to the effects bar and we want to make this louder. Now there's several ways of making it louder. There's a, a preferable way that I'm going to show you when I show you how to make your own recordings, uh, but I'm going to use an alternate way this time, which is simply to hit amplify and this tells me this is as loud as it can go without distorting it. And I'm going to say, okay. The reason I'm using amplify instead of this other way is because this is a modern, recent, contemporary, highly produced by a publishing house. I think they probably did the other way. I think that this, the sound of this is nice and full and rich. I think they have already previously modified the sound. And when you modify the sound with some of these programs, um, you can do it once or twice and make the sound sound better, but if you keep using the same effect, it ultimately makes the sound deteriorate. So I'm just amplifying right now, but after I've shown you the other technique, you can try both. You can see if it sounds better and, and take it from there. 
So now we've made it as loud as it can be. So it's probably not gonna clip off sounds. And now we're just gonna go to truncate silence in the effects bar, go to effect and then truncate silence. And this will take out all of the pauses. When you hit truncate silence, again, I, I encourage you, please, before you watch any further, you haven't already, download the program, put it in your computer, and then watch my video and pause and go to yours. Uh, because when you call up a screen like this in Audacity, if you make any changes to it, they stay immediately. And so if you want to remember the sort of default values, um, you need to look at it the first time, write it down, and then make some changes. I believe the default value is to truncate to one second here. Uh, and that will leave one second of space. But I find that half a second is a better interval uh, for a pause between the end of one sentence and the next sentence. It leaves less, less space and it just flows more naturally. So I'm making it half a second. And we started out and the program is an hour and five minutes and 36 seconds long. So if we truncate it to 36 seconds, we are going to find, I suspect it'll probably be about 20 minutes long. Uh, let's see, we're almost there. It's going to be 17 minutes and 51 seconds. So uh, if you take out the gaps and the pauses, you find that a Pimsleur course, this Pimsleur course is 75% error. Only 25% of it is, uh, is actual recording. And now you can play it. Prospect Mira. Number 10. Переход на кольцевую линию. And it goes straight through. So you can shadow this if you so choose, and I think that's the better technique. Or again, if you want to pause after each prompt and say what you said, then you'll have the exact time needed. And you can do this and review this four times, three or four times in the time that it would have taken you to do the entire lesson. So truncating this kind of audio um, say, not only saves time, but as I said, prevents the mind from wandering, helps you stay focused, not get bored and not get lost. So that's the way you truncate a Pimsleur course. Let's truncate an Asimil course. Let's truncate um, Asimil's, here's an Asimil Turkish lesson. So this is an early lesson. This is lesson, lesson eight of Asimil's Turkish. And whereas Pimsleur at least had a good pedagogical reason, thinking, okay, you're supposed to say in the pauses, um, this has a lot of pauses and spaces, even between words, even between sentences here. And this is only because this is a very early lesson in uh, a book that they're trying to give you lots of space. Most Asimil courses don't have, have this much space. So but we're gonna wanna do the same thing. So again, what were those steps? We can go here. And first of all, let's make it as loud as possible so we can hear it better. And so we're, if we, when we truncate it, we don't lose any of the final sounds. And now let us do that. Let's truncate it. We go to the effects and we go to truncate silence and we will find that our two minute and 28 uh, audio file has become one minute and 10 seconds. And so now we can listen to it. Boğaza gidelim. Çocuklar, ben bugün balık yemek istiyorum. Boğaza gidelim mi? Çok güzel bir fikir. It's still um, very uh, didactically slow in the speech. So another thing that you might want to do is something like this, even though we've closed up the gaps and made it easier to think. You might want to say, you know, this is too slow. This is artificially slow. I'd kind of like to change it right now. I've got, I go, I'm sorry, I should have spelled slower. So I go to effects. And I go to change speed. And I can look at this and I can say, all right, I think that they're speaking too slow. I kind of like to speed it up. So let me make this um, instead of percent change to make it slower, I'm gonna make it faster. I wanna go to uh, 1.05 and that will give me a 5% change making it somewhat faster. So if we don't wanna sound like Minnie Mouse, let's see how it sounds. <laughs> Boğaza gidelim mi? That sounds more like a normal voice, but if it's getting too fast, then we want to select that. So that's something you can do with an Asimil method, an earlier method. If there's speed, close up the gaps, and if it's too slow, you can somewhat speed it up. More advanced Asimil method. Here we have uh, the next one is from Asimil's Hindi. So this is lesson 48 of their Hindi. This is a very advanced lesson. Um, but right here, you can see the difference. This here is like what we've been looking at. This is voice. This here, you can tell immediately the way it looks. This is music. 
this is the end of a, of a lesson and they're about to introduce a, uh, a pause or a review lesson. And so they put some culturally uh, appropriate music that might be nice and fun to listen to one time. But if you are trying to shadow your Hindi lesson and, and work effectively, uh, I don't think that we need half of our um, 11 minutes to be uh, music. So one thing you can do with this is listen one time, put it to someone else, and then just get rid of it. So now we don't have our music anymore. And now we can do the same thing Let's, that we've done before. Let us amplify it to make it as loud as possible to hear it better and reduce losing any uh, clipped sounds. And let us truncate the silence. And we will go from needing 10 minutes and 28 seconds, needing two minutes and 46 seconds to listen to this. This is an advanced lesson. So they're already speaking at a nice normal pace. We don't need to do it, worry about the speed of anything like this. So uh, again, um, you can save a lot of time uh, over um, not doing this uh, and review this infinitely more times, more profitably and shadow it at a more natural pace than having these unnatural gaps between certain lines and sometimes even between, even among sentences or phrases. So that is an Asimil course. That was, Asimil is uh, all target language, but we might find we have a different kind of course. You might find we're working with a teach yourself course or a colloquial course or a living language course. In which case, we also have on our audio, we have lots of English language instruction. 14B, conversation practice. Now take part in a conversation similar to the one you've just heard. Answer Shabnam's questions using... These instructions are not something you want to... When you listen to audio to learn a foreign language, you want to listen to it repeatedly, go over it, review it. Um, you don't need these instructions every single time. It's maddening to have to listen to them. Um, and so it's best to get rid of them. So when you edit a course like this, you should pay close attention to what you're doing. You should listen to the whole thing and get rid of things that you don't need. And in fact, what you're doing when you do this is giving an inspectional read to the textbook and getting a good idea of an overview of the contents. And so uh, that's a very helpful process when you then go and study it. But um, let us get rid of the, um, the, that English language instruction at the beginning of this. And I believe this is where it begins. In yes, that's where it begins. And then the final thing is probably gonna be something like, well done, good job. Good job. Yeah, we don't need to hear that every single time we do that. So if we get rid of this, um, now we go and we can, this is already as loud as it can be. It's touching the, the edges, so we don't need to increase the sound. We just need to truncate the silence. And here we have something that we can shadow, something that we can profitably listen to. So that sounds like something you can shadow. As a matter of fact, I went and I shadowed that. If you don't know Persian, you probably don't recognize the two of those as being the same, and maybe, and maybe they don't sound enough. This is what I was saying, though, that when you shadow, you can test yourself. So obviously, I recorded myself doing that, so that's one thing you can do with shadowing. And so how can I tell? I can go back and forth. I can try to remember. Well, that's what I sound like here. And this is what the original sounds like and try to remember. Um, but better than that is uh, putting both of them together in one video. So let me close that. I don't need that anymore. And let me close that. I don't need that anymore. And let me open this one here where I have put both of those into one video. So the way you do that, you go to file, you go to open, and that will put the first one up here. And then to get the second one in here, you go back to file, and instead of putting open, you go to import audio, and you select the second one, and that will put it down under here. So now I have both of them together, and I can play them together, and we can hear how accurate I am on top of the voice, whether I'm matching it in uh, well or not. 
Now, when I've talked about shadowing before, I've said, and I maintain, that it's kind of impossible to shadow really wrong. If you are shadowing really wrong, you can't shadow. You have to stop. That's when it breaks down. You're unable to continue. You're hearing a voice speak in your ear, and you're making the same resonance in from your from your mouth. They have to match. If they don't match, you can't do it. You have to stop. So, in order, if you are able to keep talking, you must be matching to a certain degree. But how well? And how can you tell? This is the way that you can see where you are. So, if we play this, you're going to hear that it sounds like it's in stereo. It sounds like it's in stereo. And then there's a place over here where I'm off. And you can hear that I'm off. And you know that I'm off because this is the original, this is the fix, this is the correct, and this is where I am. So we're going to notice where I'm off. And then when you want to really get good at a language, you need to do deliberate practice. You need to go and you need to find a spot check and look and say, well, where am I making mistakes and why? So let's find a mistake. این جمعه چه کار دوست داری بکنی؟ نمیدونم شما میخواهید چه کار کنین؟ میخواهی بریم یک کنسرت یا نمایش نامه؟ من تازگی کنسرت بودم و خیلی علاقه به نمایش نامه So what I would do at this point is I might do it again and see if it's a consistent error that I'm making. If it's a one-off fluke, I don't worry about it. But if it's a consistent error, I would spot check that and really pay attention and try to correct that. So this is a way that you can use your own recording to uh, help yourself correct and make um, better, uh, better shadowing. The most valuable way that I think I've been using uh, audacity in recent years is unquestionably with making recordings of your own voice to listen to and plant that voice in your brain. This works particularly well with so-called dead languages such as Latin. I'm using Latin point of fact. Um, Latin is a language that I learned going on 40 years ago when I was in college. Um, I learned it in a very good and thorough, rigorous way, a very intensive one semester, every single day meeting and going through Wheelock's grammar in great detail. And then immediately the next semester, starting to read Kikoro uh, with intensive reading, parsing every line, every word, that sort of old fashioned way of learning how to read and did that for a couple of another, another two years uh, as an undergraduate. And then when I was in graduate school, when I was writing my doctoral dissertation, um, I probably spent uh, an hour a day or more uh, reading medieval Latin texts over a couple of years. And so I got quite good at it at that time. Um, but the way I originally, originally learned to read it and the way I did it there, um, I never was taught to think in it. I never was taught to speak it. Uh, it didn't, I don't think it occurred to my um, teachers at first. And yet that idea occurred to me. Uh, over the years, I you know had different. I get involved in Korean or Arabic and not touch Arabic, Latin for a while. Then I go back to it, and when I'd start to revive my ability to read it, I would always think it'd be really good if I could speak this language. What a shame that I can't think in it. I mean, think of all the scholars throughout the past three thousand years who've thought in in Latin. It'd be great to be on those wavelengths. I want to learn to speak Latin. I want to learn to think in Latin. And so I tried many different things to do that, and never really got anywhere even when it occurred to me, hmm, maybe I should record my voice and shadow it or listen to it. And I did do that. I recorded my voice way back in the day on a tape recorder. I recorded my voice on you know, just the, the recording here and tried to listen to my voice. And what I found is that when you just make a simple recording of your voice, um, it's actually quite hard to uh, when you try to shadow it in particular, it's hard to pick out individual sounds. Somehow the quality is not good enough um, to really perceive. Um, and I think part of that is also the fact that when you hear your own voice outside of your head, it inevitably sounds a little mm, tinny, a little uh, nasal, more nasal than you think your voice really sounds. Because when you're speaking, you have your whole resonance chamber going here, whereas when your voice is externalized, you hear that, and you don't really like the way you sound. It's, it's not very pleasant. Um, so I was not able to really uh, endure with that for a long time. Whereas what I've discovered now, the way I'm going to show you now, is a way that you can make your voice sound really nice and full and rich. Uh, you can hear all the nuances and all the details so you can shadow it well, and it's a pleasant experience. 
So you can plant, you can record yourself reading or saying something, narrating something, make it sound nice, make it sound good, make it sound fluid and fluent. And you can listen to that. You can plant your own voice inside your own brain and you naturally, your system hears you speaking and you feel good about it. And you feel like, hey, I'm thinking, I am speaking in this language. You plant the language in your head, you speak on top of yourself. Until you've tried it, you won't know the difference. But once you've done it, I'm sure you'll agree that shadowing yourself is a different experience from shadowing somebody else's voice. And when you do that, you really feel like you're in control of the language and you're able to start thinking in it and, and feeling in control of it. So I think this worked, I know this worked wonderfully with me for Latin. I'm sure it would work equally well with Old Norse or ancient Greek or Sanskrit or any other so-called dead language. And there's no reason it couldn't also work with a living language, which you could find native speakers whom you would want to use as your guides to pronunciation. Uh, but if you have any difficulty thinking in a language or speaking in it or feeling comfortable speaking it fluidly, I think that this is an exercise that would be very good to do. So how do you make yourself sound nice and good? So this here is just a regular recording. I haven't done anything to it. I just recorded myself <clears throat> on Audacity. I should say, to record on Audacity, you just hit this red button when you don't have anything here. And Audacity can record either from the microphone here uh, onto into here or from the uh, whatever is on the computer on the um, on playing through the, the speaker. Um, in order to change that, it's slightly different on every single computer. So I couldn't really show you to you, um, but you just need to change these settings with the microphone and these things until you find the right setting to record from the, the, the source that you want to. So I've recorded myself saying, reading the first chapter of uh, Robinson Crusoe in Latin, which we're reading in the Latin reading and discussion circle in my academy. And it sounds sort of like this. Not to sum eborki, ex bona familia, said peregrina. So that's just a straight recording of me reading this chapter. And without context, maybe that sounds okay. It does sound okay if you're just listening to the um, content, like taking dictation. But after we've modified it, we'll compare and contrast. And I think you'll hear the vast difference that it makes to do these changes. So what am I going to do? to make a recording that I've just hit play, record, and made a recording for myself the way I would get a recording on my phone or on a tape recorder in the old days. Um, there's some other steps beyond what we did before. First of all, I'm going to go to some blank space and I'm just gonna capture um, like a moment of silence. I'm gonna go here and I'm gonna to go to noise reduction and I'm gonna use this as the noise profile because I made this uh, in my room where I might have had uh, my cat make a noise uh, to, uh, that would be in the background. I might, have made, uh, I might have made it with the air conditioner or some other sound in the background uh, with a plane flying by. So if I go now, having captured that and do noise reduction, then I will get rid of that, not just here, but everywhere, noise reduction. So now, I am not gonna have that sort of staticky sound in the background. The next thing I'm gonna do, and this is the better way of making voices louder, is rather than just hitting amplify, I'm gonna hit normalize. Normalize also makes things as loud as possible, but it's got these other checks that I'm sure an audiophile could explain a bit more about normalizing peak amplitudes and stuff like this, but it's also the same basic effect of making something look uh, make it something, fill up all the space, be as loud as possible without being distorted. But then after I've amplified it, then I'm going to go and again uh, to compressor. And again, I should have said before with the amplifier all the time, please pause your video, copy these values, make these changes. This is how I found the best way to make the voice, but this is different from what you're going to find when you um, set up the, um, when, when you first install Audacity, and you might want to remember those original values, but these are the best thresholds and things, noise floors that I've found for making the voice sound nice. So normalize makes as loud as possible without distorting. Compressor basically makes the, watch what happens, um, it makes some of those, the louder portions not quite as loud and the quieter portions louder. So it sort of balances things out. And then finally, I'm going to go and I am going to put some, what is called, um, I'm gonna, the, it's still, it's now nicer and louder and balanced, but still 
compared to what I hear in my head, my voice sounds kind of nasal and tangy. So to make it a fuller, deeper, richer sound, I'm going to go to the filter EQ, filter curve. I'm going to hit manage. I'm going to choose factory presets and I'm going to do a bass boost. So to give it some more bass, give it a richer tone. And I'm going to end up with something that looks like this. So now let me take a passage and let me play this. Pipe Patermeus Germanus Fuert e Brema ubi appellabatur Kreuznayer. You can hear that sounds nice and rich. Let me undo all of that. And let me play that same thing. Pipe Patermeus Germanus Fuert e Brema ubi appellabatur Kreuznayer. Maybe you can hear the difference now. So it's just a much richer experience. This way, once I've done all that, Again, listening to this in my head is a very satisfying experience. It sounds nice and rich and fitch. It's fluid and shadowing it. It's my own voice. I'm making it. This is what has enabled me ultimately to be able to um, speak and think in Latin now uh, when I, I could not do so for, for most, of my, uh, most, of my, most of my life. So I give Audacity a lot of credit for that and encourage you to try that with other uh, literary languages. Another thing that you can do with Audacity is rescue older materials. Um, you might find yourself a wonderful old linguaphone or Berlitz course from the 1960s in a suitcase that's still on cassettes, in which case you might want to find a, an old tape deck. Uh, you connect the tape deck to the computer with a cord that goes in the microphones, and then you play the tape and it gets recorded when you hit the record button onto. Um, onto Audacity. Or you can go to um, various sites that have the courses that were produced for the Peace Corps and the Defense Language Institute and the Foreign Service Institute and many other um, courses from the 1960s or so that are very solid and very thorough and have things that people in the polyglot community still like, such as uh, pattern drills that you're hard pressed to find elsewhere. So you wouldn't want to use this older material as your only source, but it's worth rescuing and having in a, in a resource library. So this is a tape that has been digitized and put online as the Defense Language Institute's Persian course. Um, it's only a mono tape, so you don't have the, the double thing. And I think you can look at this immediately and say, what's this thick line here? Well, tapes get a lot of hiss and static. So this is pretty strong here. So again, what we're going to want to do is take this and say, let's, um, before we do anything else, let's get rid of that static. It's a big sample of it. In fact, uh, noise reduction, get noise profile, then do the noise reduction and Get rid of all of the static? Let's see. No, there's still a bit. So if we listen, as I said, you can do most things, most effects, uh, about twice without distorting the sound. So let's get noise reduction again, get the profile. And now we've gotten rid of the static, but we still have these Reading 19. Who loud, loud gaps, long gaps, like five seconds Medat kujas. between each sentence. Um, so let's do some other things. Did you see that here, that click here? That might be too small, but one thing that you can do with things that you're digitizing from tapes and record players that I haven't done before is you can do a click removal and well, it made it somewhat smaller so you can get rid of a lot of clicks like that. Um, but now let's look at this and say, hmm, we've cleaned this up. Um, and again, uh, I make a judgment call. You, 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 you can change things, you can experiment and do things, but this is um, something from the 1960s. Uh, I think it probably was just made on a tape recorder. I don't think it was put through anything like that normalization, compression, uh, filter equalization that I suspect the Asimil and the um, and the Pimsleur and other modern courses are before they're put on the market. So rather than just amplifying this, I'm going to do the same things that I did with my own um, 
my, my own voice, that is normalize it, and then compress it. And then add the base value. And so now I've got it as loud and full and rich as it can sound. It's still 16 minutes and 42 seconds, mostly gaps, obviously. So let me um, truncate that silence to half a second. And found that I've got now about uh, five minutes and 46 seconds of useful audio. That still sounds, uh, sounds a lot better. But one other thing that happens with older tapes uh, is I think that somehow as they, they age, they somehow something happens to make it speed up. So that sounds a little bit fast. So um, beforehand, we had taken the, um, the Asimil Turkish course that was too, um, too slow and made it a little bit faster. Now this is a little bit fast. It doesn't quite sound natural. It sounds too fast. Let's make it too slow. When you change the speed, uh, my experience is um, you can sometimes go up to 10% without distorting it, but usually it's about 5%, maybe not even, but it makes a difference. But if you make too much of a change, you end up sounding like this or like Minnie Mouse or something. So let's, let's make this um, uh, at 9.5, change slower. And let's see how that sounds. Hey, cat, be that in ya shafahi. Cheshmaun, siast, ya abi. Now, even if you don't understand Persian, I think you can hear that. Oh, that sounds more like a normal voice. Let's undo it. Listen again. Hey, cat, be that in ya shafahi. Cheshmaun, That's about it. Now, this is uh, slow. Hey, cat, be that in ya shafahi. Cheshmaun. I think that sounds better. Slow down a little bit and made to sound. Uh, natural. So again, we've saved an inordinate amount of time over listening to uh, these gaps and saved a lot of uh, frustration and uh, possibility of mind wandering. Uh, so we've taken an old tape that was basically unusable and now made some nice usable audio that we can have with that. And one last thing is to go beyond didactic material to native material. So at a certain point, you're going to say, I'm ready to listen to something that the native speakers listen to. And you're going to go and Again, you can capture something like this from YouTube. This is a chapter from an Arabic book for Arab speakers. This is not something for people who are learning Arabic. This is for Arabs to enjoy a story that's being told. But it sounds nice and rich and fully produced, but it sounds... Well, I've lived in, in Dubai and Lebanon for almost nine years and worked hard at my Arabic. That's not too hard for me to grasp, but I can put myself back in my own shoes maybe five or 10 years ago and say, that was probably too fast for uh, a beginner. So maybe the first time I hear that, I want to slow this down. And I can slow the entire audio book down with the same way that I just showed you. I don't want to do anything else, but I'm going to go to change speed. And as I said, I think uh, I can do this 5%. <laughs> That definitely would definitely be easier to shadow and fast, but maybe I can even do another 5%. Let me do that again. So now this has been slowed down a total of 10%. That might be getting a little slowed down like that, but it might still be okay. And the very first time you listen to something like this, you might want to uh, slow it down to that degree. And you never probably going over 10%, you can never do that. Sometimes even 10% is too much, but slowing material down so that you can hear it um, is, is a useful thing to do with Audacity. So I've shown you how to edit uh, files that you get with Pemsler, uh, Asimil, and then other courses like Teach Yourself, Colloquial Living Language. Um, I've shown you how to use this to compare and contrast your own record yourself while you shadow, put it on with the original and play them in tandem to see where you are off so you can spot check and correct yourself. Um, I've shown you how to use this to make uh, good quality videos, uh, I'm sorry, audio of yourself speaking so that you can hear yourself speaking in the language and you're having to really get used to it. 
Uh, I've shown you how to um, rescue old fashioned audio from tapes and cassettes. And uh, also now finally how to use this to um, slow down audio books and get them a bit more accessible to you. So I hope that this was valuable and useful to you. This has been an invaluable program for me to use in my polyglot studies over the years. And uh, I hope this was very useful. Um, again, if you're still with me listening to this, you're probably interested in what I do and my approach. Once again, next um, Tuesday, May 24th at 1 p.m. Chicago time, I'm going to attempt a live streaming with another uh, YouTube educator about a conversation that we had and also talk more about developments with my academy. So uh, please try to join us for that and maybe watch that conversation. And uh, if not, then I will have another video for you next weekend. So thank you for listening and I will talk to you then. Goodbye.